everyone. This is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyshore. I'm here at the St. Louis Chess Club and you are watching uh, games everyone should know by heart. So um, for today I've prepared some two games. Um, one, the first one that we're going to be looking at is between Reti and Bokolyubov. And the other one is going to be another Judith Polgar game. Uh, I was kind of deciding what would be the best games that everyone should know and uh, well I memorized them myself too so or, or at least I tried we'll see so um, this game is pretty I think this game is pretty fun and it kind of shows um, the uh, it was the start of the hyper modern so the game was played in 1924 and um, you know Reti I, I really like this um, the ideas that have come up, you know, in those years that you don't have to uh, occupy the center immediately, you can just let your opponent, you know, uh, occupy it first and then, you know, attack it later. And um, I'm very happy to know that these ideas are still used nowadays, hopefully by some of the viewers and people here. And so, ready to start with knight f3, d5, c4. Now, okay, some, some other ideas that, that are played are not with c4. Sometimes Reti also played um, with what we saw earlier in the uh, uh, viewer's choice, right? With g3, bishop g2, d3, and then you can also play with e4. So there are various systems, but um, in this game he played c4. So uh, I always enjoy teaching um, my more beginner students uh, this kind of things because they always ask me, but you said that it's so important to occupy the center. Why do some of these people not occupy it? And then I said the story and you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty nice to, uh, to be able to describe those things as well. Hopefully you all know these things already. So I'm not going to emphasize on it. G3, knight f6, bishop g2. This is something pretty standard nowadays, bishop d6. Any of you playing this with the other colors? None? Okay, so, like, yes or no? You play? Knight of three, and with c4? Okay, okay. I mean, I, I, these are nice things to play sometimes, because you're not really showing whether you'll push d4 or not, and you always keep Especially on this move order, you always keep ideas with b3, bishop b2. So you're not really showing what you want to do. Maybe you'll play the Catalan, maybe you'll just play, you know, the English. Or, or maybe uh, if, if black plays c5, for example, maybe you, will, you can take and play the reverse Tarash. Something like this, right? And you have an extra tempo, should be fun. So anyways, there are a lot of, there are a lot of options. So Bogolubov played bishop d6 in this position. Um, kind of, you know, keeping the options open with the pawn, with the c pawn. Castle, castle, b3. So now white protects this pawn. Of course, uh, so I, I should mention this, that if black takes here early, there are various w ways um, there, some people do take. And white does take that pawn back eventually. I've seen some people actually try with knight a3 as well and try to take it. Um, but, um, you know, you typically don't want to give up the center, but you can play it if you want to. Then you would play something with bishop d7 and, and uh, knight c6 or bishop c6 and have a nice position too. But in this game, black castled b3. Now, of course, if you don't really want to take anymore because white has brought the defense. Rook e8, bishop b2, and knight b to d7. So black has chosen to play some kind of queen's gambit type of uh, system, right? If, if white plays d4 in this position, we have the queen's gambit. And that's exactly what happened in the game. And black responded with c6. In my opinion, if you're trying to play the queen's gambit, um, I think you should, uh, especially against the, the Catalan, you should try to figure out whether you really need to play c6 fast or not. And I believe here b6 is another option for black. 
And the idea would be, of course, to play bishop b7, rook c8, and then play just c5 directly. Um, you want to equalize with black first and then get the advantage. So that would, um, that would uh, be pretty equal, in my opinion. But OK, there's nothing wrong with c6. We can consider that we've, right? We can consider that we've gotten some pretty normal Catalan now. Knight b to d2. What is White's plan in this position? Queen c2 and prepare for e4, yeah, certainly. And some other ideas that were, were uh, uh, invented by Pillsbury, not in this particular position, but with knight e5 and f4, right? Those are nice ideas as well. But you definitely want to take your queen out, so. Um, here, black made a mistake. No, it's a dubious move, but why is this a mistake? And we know it nowadays, you should really take care of your pieces, first of all, like play something like b6, <laughs> bishop b7. Why move the knight? There is no way, like if white wouldn't have taken that knight out and had played a move like rook e1 or something, you know, then yes, maybe you can play a move like knight e4 because you know your other knight will be able to come to f6 and back it up. Although this is not an outpost, so you should always be ready that white will move this knight and then play f3 and chase you away. But these ideas are prominent. You see them in a lot of games nowadays. But when you don't have the pawn in f5, this is not a stone wall. This is just a Meran type of position, Queen's Gambit type of position. You don't want to place your knight there to allow the doubling of the pawns. It's not such a great, such a great idea uh, for black. I think b6 makes way more sense. A better plan for black is to try to play c5 and equalize. Just get a symmetrical, more or less position and uh, play on from there. So knight e4, what do we do with white? Why is this move not such a great idea for black? Take a double pawn. Take a double pawns and you might tell me now that these double pawns are not weak because they are not on an open file and they are linked to this it's an island here, like it's not two islands or something. But the thing is, um, black is not ready. Like it would have been much nicer if there was a pawn in f5 and black would recapture with this pawn and then have the f-file like we have in the, in the uh, stone wall. But here it's different. And now, knight e5. And what do you do about your pawn in e4? Can you play in this position knight f6? Of course you can, it's legal, but is it good? <laughs> Come on guys, no. this pawn is going to be lost, no? no. It's queen c2. And black, you see, if black had b6, bishop b7, I would never tell you this is not such a great idea. You, it's often made by black. But in this case, black is not ready to actually support that pawn. So knight f6 doesn't work, so that's why in this position they had to play f5. And f5 with the rook in e8, you know, you don't get me wrong, this happens sometimes for black, but not with this setup with the rook in e8. I mean, at least you need to have the rook in f8 to at least have some continuation of plans on the, uh, on the king's side. The rook has wasted a little bit of time. So Reti played f3 here, but I think it would have been better to take there first. Bishop or queen takes, maybe queen takes. I've seen a lot of people taking with the queen and the idea is that they think the bishop in d7 is actually uh, worse than actually being in c8 because they want to develop it to fianchetto it. And now f3 I think would have been a better choice for white because we keep a nice pawn structure. And uh, well, we take, we take with which piece? And if I play, can I play e5? Yeah, I, was, I only considered um, bishop takes, and if bishop takes, I was playing queen d2 first and then stuff. So maybe I do the same. I don't play f3 immediately if queen takes. Yeah, maybe, maybe I also play queen d2 here. If you play e5, what is my idea? 
yeah, something like this. And then maybe d5 to let you have those that messed up majority. Maybe I put the, even this f rook, f rook to d1. Try to play f3 immediately, which would have allowed Bogolubov to capture here first. Pawn takes, now bishop c5 check, the king has to go. And now if I trade, um, I think black is doing all right because yes, this bishop is messed up, but the position is closed. Neither of your bishops have some clear future. Mm. The only small thing that, black, that white has is the fact that they have a small advantage because of this pawn space advantage, but that's, that's about it. With the bishop in c5 for controlling, the d6 square. Now let's say you take with this pawn, then we have ideas with a5, making sure that this bishop will be staying there forever. And then um, there are ideas with a5, f4, very typical for this type of pawn structure. Um, it's, I think white's advantage here is minimal. Instead, Bogolubov made a change of move order. He took with a uh, pawn like this, bishop takes, and now he didn't, again, he didn't take an e5. He played queen c7. Now takes, takes, bishop c5, king g2, a5. Once again, I'm okay with this position with black. What do you guys think? Who is better here? White. Slightly though, right? I mean, Queen you have some e4 ideas. Queen c2, rook d1, okay, I'll, I can place my queen to... Here? Is it wrong? Is it wrong to play queen g5? You have ideas with bishop c1, but... Yeah, but I try not to do anything when you pu push e4. Like, I don't want to take and help you get that, I mean, the F file and diagonal, I'll just stay, maybe g even G6. And I try to capture back so that you have, you'll have a passed pawn, but also weak pawn. So that bishop will be open. Would you, would you, what is? Would I play queen C1 today? Yeah. Uh, you want to play queen C1? You can certainly do that if you want, yeah. Uh, but then you're going to place this rook to D1, right? So what will you do with this other one? You're just temporarily stopping queen g5. I also have the e7 square for my queen. And uh, also have ideas. Well, right now they don't work. But I would have ideas with bishop <coughs> d4. Well, do they work? No, no, they don't work. Because this, this. Oopsie. So I can play, uh, this move, for example. It's a playable position, but it's not a big thing for white. You have plans, I will not deny it. But compared to the game, this would have been a much better choice for black. Instead, you play queen c7, allowing for the capture here. So now you don't double my pawns anymore. Bishop takes and e4. So instead of white at least having this bishop closed up, right, by the pawn in e5, now there will be possibilities of playing some d5 at some point to open up the bishop, right? And the, the bishop to uh, d7 cut off the queen from the king side pass. A little bit too, yes. The queen, the queen is closed by that bishop too, that's true. Uh, that's typically a bad piece. You need to try to find a way for it to either trade it or something. But uh, in this case, white will stay with the center and, um, and the diagonals for their bishops will be for the moment better than blacks. Um, e5. C4, so, uh, C5, chasing the bishop away. And now queen C2. I like this move as well for, for white because I'm strengthening the c5 pawn, considering that these pawns will be traded. I want to make sure that's going to be stopped. And also with, with b4, I'm also stopping 
queen a5 ideas or a5 ideas and what do I want to do against f5? a5. Just a3? You take, I take, okay, you can take there. With which piece do I take back? Well, you have to make sure that you're not losing something here. What do you do now? You can take with the bishop. Why not with the bishop? What were you using if you take with the queen? Well, what do you do after after pawn takes? I want to take an e4. Yeah. Oh. Typically, e5, like, you don't get anything. Yes. It's pretty equal, no? Okay, maybe I can just retreat and wait for for you to try to play for for a win. But why don't you like to take with the bishop? I want to keep my queen to d4, and that way that your bishop will be passive. I have my queen pretty active. This is what I'm thinking. But he played queen c2, you know, he had a brilliant game. I just, I suggest it's something that maybe nowadays would be something we'd consider to do. But he finished the development, he respected the principles. Pawn takes, he took in, in f5, rook d8. Nice move, taking the rook. And now you don't really have a good place for that rook, is the thing. For example, if you play this move. What can white do? F6. Something like this. And then you want to mess up completely black's, uh, black's king. So rook e5 was played by Bogolyubov. Takes with tempo. Rook takes f5. What do we do now? Queen c4 check. Okay, king h8. Well, the first thing, look, when you have a position where there are a lot of pieces en prise, like hanging, you need to consider the captures first. Like, just because he took in f5, it doesn't mean that he or she calculated everything and it works and it's perfect. You need to double check your opponent always. Doesn't matter who it is. Weaker, stronger, doesn't matter. Just double check it. See if taking f5 works. Rook takes, bishop takes, queen takes, rook takes d4. What do we do now? Why to move and win? Of course, rook f1. So the position, if you don't have something serious here, you should not be happy with white because you traded a lot of pieces, you had a little bit, like you had the center, and the pieces got traded, and now what? Now you're, the reason you accepted all of these trades is because black's king remained without much protection, and there's a problem there. So just rook f1. You're bringing the last piece to attack. I like this game and I chose it for today's class because I, I, I noticed how white really brought all of their pieces to attack 
and even if they traded, not pretty serious. There's a threat. How do you protect it? Probably would have been a slightly better choice than, than blacks. Still, what do we do here after queen e7? Okay. And now? Can I come back? Oh, that's true. Okay. Bishop now carries e6 or something. Well, then maybe rook d if bishop e6, maybe rook d8. So how about bishop d5 okay, maybe? That's good. That's perfect. And then you want to take. Yeah. Black played rook to d8. You can play queen f6 in that last position, right? You can? Okay, okay. wait, maybe. And you're not losing here after queen c8? Yeah. You can play rook d1, but I will take it. Yeah. For sure, I won't make queen takes f8 mistake, because I'm <laughs> pinned, right? But uh, I will take your rook in d1. But the game finished as beautifully after rook d8. How did white win? And then bishop e8, and that's black resigned. You probably saw this final position, right? This is this is famous, but you know, here came the game <laughs> that with it, and um, you know, basically it seemed like black was okay because they just traded everything, but the position is really slightly better for white, and it just went from from this e5. It just went. Um, it was probably calculated most of it. Even here, I mean, after queen c2. Um, it's maybe black should have tried maybe taking here first and then taking in d4. I mean, really not allowing all that those trades, but instead, you know, with 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 this capture, just um, they didn't see it coming. I mean, it seemed like they can get their pawn back, but with rook d8, they're simply just blockading their rook there and. There isn't so much to do. So you really have to be careful in these positions. If you have the chance, in my opinion, to capture the knight in e5 and double white's pawns, you're really stopping their, their attacks. It doesn't seem like white has a lot of attack, but when these bishops open up, y you know, you can, you can fall into a lot of traps. So this was a nice game. Did you guys like it? Yeah. Great. So next, we are going to go back to a um, female chess player, the best in the world, um, most famous one, and who has broken a lot of records, Judith Polgar. And I have chosen a game that she won against Alexei Shirov. I need to put it on training. Uh, the reason I chose this to this game and the two players, well, first of all, you know, I, I, I really want I think uh, there are a lot of great, great games played by female players too, and although they didn't manage to become world champions in, in the open section, uh, they really show great potential. And uh, Alexei Shirov is known for his dynamic style, right? He's written a, a book, Fire on the Board, a lot of you know, attacking, attacking chess. Um, the game was played in 1995, and this time it was, um, it was him who was under attack. <laughs> so let's see. He has chosen actually the modern. I think it's kind of interesting that I, I kept, you know, for today, the entire day, I kind of chose games to kind of follow the same pattern. I didn't do it on purpose, but it turned out perfectly. So let's see what happens when a top player chooses to play something like this against, uh, you know, the strongest female of all time so far, Judith Polgar. So she went for the center, 
perfect. Bishop g7, knight c3. I'm not going to comment on the opening too much because um, I think there are a lot of systems that both players can can choose. And um, okay, um, it's been a while since I played with either colors. This so um, we'll just try to focus on the game uh, as as it went from from the opening to the uh, to the middle game. Any questions about the opening? Though I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. No? <laughs> OK. Well, OK. So c6, basically, uh, with by playing on this move order, black also keeps the option to play with d5. So kind of combine the, the pirk with, uh, with uh, Karakhan. And also with c6, you have, of course, ideas with b5. Typically, if white plays bishop c4, this line should not work. But I've seen people play it. I played it myself, like maybe 10 years ago as a kid with black. I would just give up the pawn, and actually it worked out somehow. But OK, at a high level, I don't think this is, this is such a great idea. So Shirov settled for d6. Queen f3. <laughs> Subtle. Subtle. Subtle threat. Um, I, I remember, I mean, a lot of us, when we learn to play chess, we learn this idea of bishop c4, queen f3, checkmate. OK, now it's not checkmate. But um, it's it's a nice approach of it, you know showing attacking chess and um, well you want your queen to be close to the attack basically and you're kind of showing that your knight will not be developed in f3 it will probably go this way right or through h3 it really depends so queen f3 threat what do we do with black e6. yep e6. And just because black has moved four pawns so far is not as bad as it might seem because there are ideas that black is going to consider and play with b5. Playing that move with tempo, it's through another pawn move, but this is how this kind of modern uh, positions work. You, you give up the center, you chase that bishop with tempo, you'll have bishop b7. Um, and eventually you'll develop your pieces and you'll play some c5, your bishop will be opened, and black does have pretty, you know, good ideas. And the attack has been stopped. And the thing is, if you don't castle too fast, for white is going to be able to actually start an attack. Um, so what you have to be careful for, though, are ideas with, you know, if white will have some ways to trade this bishop, but if you don't develop the knight just yet, maybe that won't be possible. And white will have to find a way to open up the, the center, which, again, is not so simple, because any time one of the pawns pushes, the black will respond with a counter push in the center. So uh, OK, typically. Knight g2, e2. b5. Knight d7 is, of course, another option that, that black could play in this position. And just wait a little bit longer to play b5. So white often plays bishop b3 to, as a prophylactic move, and then castle, and you know. Uh, like I said, white does have the center, but it's not easy to actually create any kind of threats. And black's king is fine. But in the game, should have went for b5 directly. Bishop b3. Bishop d3 is, of course, another option. Um, games, a lot of games have been played <coughs> in this position. For some of you who are interested in pl or play this with either color, certainly something that you can check. And now, a5. So, it's quite clear what black's uh, threat is in this position, right? And I chose also this game because Black did get punished for not developing the pieces on time. Sometimes they don't get punished, but when you see them get, because this is not typically the way you should play. You should not move so many pawns in the opening. Um, but OK, Shirov likes to attack, so he went for it. A3. I've seen ideas with A4 stop that as well, right? And then B4, where do we move the knight? Where? So where do you want to bring it eventually? 
G4 maybe too, but C4. Mm -hmm. So you can go this way or this way. You gotta figure out which one works best for you. Yeah. Uh, C4 is a nice square, but yeah, of course you can. If you bring it in E3, you have, you're controlling a lot of, you have a lot of ideas. Um, the game that I had here, actually, let's see which game did I put. Um, okay, it's a game from 92. Um, White played bishop e3 and, uh, okay, turned out to be a pretty balanced position. In the game, Judith just went for a3. Because if this happens, you don't care so much. Um, I've noticed, since I'm not an e4 player, I, I try to make sense of how, you know, a lot of games have been played against the uh, the the modern and the 19c3 uh, when people develop it there they normally don't like to get it to allow it to be chased so I've seen them mostly playing a3 uh, very often they like to have the option to go knight more recently knight e2 and then going to g3 or f4 rather than allowing b4 to be played um, so if somebody knows otherwise let me know but that's what I've seen, what I've seen op often. So obviously before it's not possible, so bishop a6. What do we do with white? You want to play d5? Did you say d5 or? Yeah. Does black have any ideas in this position? Oh yeah, uh, h4. H4? <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> you want to go for it immediately? Um, B4 ideas are are certainly uh, possible here for black. D5, very good. Castle is another choice, of course. Um, probably just finish uh, finishing up development. And um, attacking ideas are not so simple now for white. Um, because if I manage to castle, even this, like bishop e6. Hmm? So d5. And at that point, it was a novelty, by the way, when, uh, when she played it in knight e5. OK, d5. Shirov. Took with the C pawn, and it makes sense. I mean, you don't want to take with the E pawn to open up your king, mm -hmm. but surprisingly, that was a better move, actually, taking with the E pawn. Oh, you're looking for the knowing or something. Uh, takes, and yeah, C5. Mm -hmm. And basically, you are going to play against this bishop. I mean, when white has such a bishop, you know, you typically want to have it open to attack on the diagonal. Um, so this would have been a nice. Um, Shirov took with the C pawn. What do we do? And now e5. So black's idea was similar to the other one that we saw, just that it's a little bit different because now you're also closing up your bishop. Right? So what do we do now with white? Wait, wait. Bishop e3, knight e4. Any other ideas? G4. G4. Ooh, go okay. <laughs> ah, you want to stop at 5? Okay. Knight e4. Let's go for knight e4. I mean, if you have the knight here, trust me, nobody will play f5. <laughs> or if they will, you have a lot of ideas, right? So it's it's not you know it's well. There are some lines actually again in the King's Indian that Black does play that re even if White gets with the knight in e6, but they have the bishop in c8 and eventually you know not eventually but they take the knight immediately, and it's playable for Black. It's a lot of the top players oh, yeah, yeah. are playing that, um, but in general. Uh, Rajabov, 
Kasparov played the King's Indian, right? Um, but um, yeah, like you typically don't want f5. It's good for you if, if black plays f5. So should have just developed. Normal, okay, I'm fine. I'm going to develop my queen and the knight, I'll castle. Pretty good. What do we do with white? Well, we have to finish our development eventually. So Judith decided to play c4 to kind of be able to, to, do, to do some stuff with tempo first. Um, what other, because actually there's a threat here for black, isn't it? No, there isn't actually, there isn't. I thought a4 and take, but that's not a threat. We'll lose that d6 pawn. <laughs> What's the idea of the c4? If I take, and knight here. Knight c3, she played. Bishop c6. OK, you don't have a clear threat besides my rook, right? Mm -hmm. So let's move it. What next? Yeah, but you know, you're going for threats in one move that are easily, easily. No, no, I'm not saying it to say it in a wrong. You have ideas with 96. I'm not going to, you know. But typically, you want to try to have more. So I don't know if this really works. So great. <laughs> That's mm? very funny. I mean, it's a nice idea. It's oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's good to have this kind of ideas because sometimes they work. But I mean, you y there are positions where you can make them work. But it's better if you try to to create a plan and and you try to improve, and you want to be able to beat somebody lower rated than you or about at the same level. You want to be better than them. You need to think in plans rather than direct threats just in one move. Unless you have a serious like attacking uh, way of attacking, con developing and continuing the attack. If it's just going to be helpful for them to, to develop, it's better to try to, uh, and uh, I trust me, I, I understand you because I have that, pro I had it, I probably still have that problem of making moves like this when I want to play attacking chess. It doesn't quite work. <laughs> so, it's uh, it's. I think, I think it's a little bit. White wants a little bit too much from that position. Um, it's helping Black a little bit get the pieces better. I mean, this bishop in a4 right now, nobody can attack it. It, it has that pin. If you place it in c6, you haven't really improved its position too much from the. It's you still have the same idea. Because yeah, it moves the rook. And here, similar, this knight is really doing a great job here in e4. Why? Because there are typical ideas to sometimes sacrifice or just put pressure in d6, and that can be a dangerous spot for, for black. And you will see this game was won because of this great, great idea uh, of the knight in being in e4. And with the knight here, like I said, you're attracting f5 so that your knight could go to that place, you know, on, on with tempo and uh, stable knight in e6, pretty nice. H4. She didn't, in this position, she played knight c3. And do you guys know what idea she had with this knight, like improving the position of this knight? So first of all, stopping any kind of c3 for that bishop to be opened up, or the file, or whatever. She's protecting d5, and she has another idea here. Well, what did I tell you about the square? Poten potential sacrifices are coming up the street here, with sacrifices and then bringing the other knight. I'm not saying that it works immediately, but that's coming up. That's an interesting idea. And this is like a... I would say, you know, I'd consider this a prophylactic move, but it's also like an improvement of, of the piece. And um, and Black played a strange move, King E7. Um, 
I, mean, I guess they should have really got scared about that, that sacrifice. Um, H6 is interesting to stop this knight g5 ideas and would take work? Probably not. Because now I think you can probably even take, right? Or no? Queen takes. Wait, let's see. Let's see. Can I play bishop c6 first and then some check? Then I take there. Oh, there's an interesting line I didn't think about. Or wait, why do I do that? Can I do that directly? Why, what the? I'm getting tired. No? Who is better here? It's not over, but I do have some great ideas coming up. Of course, black would try to give up the queen, but this bishop will be trapped as well, right? So, but I think we don't need to take the pawn, you know? Uh, after knight uh, 94, black can probably just move the queen somewhere where it's not going to allow white to attack it further, like, I will take in d7. All the way to b8. And we basically are not worried about this. Pretty, it looks pretty bad. So I'm confused. Why? What's happening here? I thought this was not possible for some reason. Queen of fate. Oh, maybe. And then maybe bishop e3 to have some ideas. Or something like that. But maybe black can hold on. Can, can they just... Maybe rook c8. It's a crazy, it's a crazy position. It's, uh, well, I will admit that it's probably maybe that's the reason why why uh, Shirov thought okay h6 doesn't work. Um, 97 was of course another option, but then we've got this check, queen takes, and you cannot castle, and um, the rook is attacked, so you need to kind of move the rook somewhere and ideas like this. A lot of ideas for white. So, but why is this game so important and everyone should know is because now black play king e7. What did Judith do? Of course sacrifice, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, she's, you know, she's uh, uh, famous for being, you know, very good dynamic attacking player. Knight takes d6. This option cannot be missed, you know. Uh, queen takes. If king takes, oopsie. If f5, okay, you just gave up a pawn, and your king is still in the center. d6 is coming. It's pretty bad, right? So if king takes, what do we do here? Queen takes f7 or knight e4. Which one do you go for? Then then d6, no? Or if you take, uh, there must be a must mate. Be death death coming soon. Yeah. Not sure what's the best. <laughs> but you can take there. And then, ooh, oopsie. Mate. <laughs> the king cannot survive. I mean, I would be super happy to have that in, a, you know, in chess. And same as in bug house. Bug house would finish much faster, of course. <laughs> But chess NPC is just, mates, NPC mates. NPC, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically it would be over. So um, king takes makes no sense. So, so Shirov took with the queen. 
Knight e4. Queen takes. What else? That's that's coming up, and the the knight will move and discover and everything. So queen takes, check. And here, knight d to f6. What do we do? What should we do in this position with white? What is missing? Do we have enough pieces to attack? Bringing one more piece. This is cool, a cool rule of attacking chess. Make sure you use all of your pieces. Especially if your opponent has a lot to protect. If you bring all of yours, maybe, you will have bigger chances. And she certainly did. After rook d1, queen b7, rook d7 check. Brilliant move. I love it. What to do? And by the way, I said queen b7, I went on it pretty fast. What if queen e6? What do we do here? Same thing. We do the same thing. Because, I mean, if king f8, what do we do now? Which move? Yeah. Pretty bad, right? And so in this position after rook d1, queen b7, rook d7, you have to sacrifice the queen. What, do, what did Judith do now? Well, you want to take the queen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you sacrificed a lot of oh, material. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no mate. You don't have enough pieces, yeah. guys. <laughs> you cannot. What, what to do? Take it. Uh, H6. Obviously, this is not such a great idea. Because what? Knight takes check. Knight takes is an option. Or knight c5, five, maybe. Knight c5. And you go for the rook better. Um, and what if uh, bishop b7 actually is kind of the only, the only chance that black had. But then bishop a4 just retreat. Black has um, a rook and a, a knight and a pawn for the queen, right? And uh, you, know, you can play h6, for example, queen g3. I mean, the, the attack continues. But uh, it would have given black a little bit more, more ideas. But the final, the, final, the final of this game is pretty brilliant. Last move of the game, if I, unless I forgot it, which I hopefully didn't, because then it would make no sense for me to, sh to teach this. <laughs> <laughs> so games, I forgot. <laughs> the games, everyone should know besides you. <laughs> Maybe we should have. <laughs> I'm joking. So. Why did Judith play in this position? Final move of the game, and I love, I love this final move of the game. Mm -hmm. Queen d1. So let's see. Did I, did I forget it? No, I didn't. Who? Good. Queen d1. And uh, well, I only put one exclamation. I should have put two exclamation points because, you know, she won the queen, and this idea with the, on the d6 squared. Uh, still did not uh, go away because of you know the pin and everything and you know this knight in e4 you can see how str strong of a piece oh, yeah. this is after after queen d1 just uh, Shirov resigned now of course there's a line that we have to see like just to understand what is happening but obviously you can see the threat so for example if black takes what do we do with white check Let's try to find the, the end of this beautiful Bishop game. E6. Bishop e6 check, OK. Right. King e8. Knight takes uh, f6 check. Knight takes, if you do oh, that. Knight. I don't know. You got to you gotta think about it. You got to think about the mate. I don't know if that's mate. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Right? Never mind. 
I mean, you you still uh, probably mm, not so sure because queen c6. Now now you help me take the knight out. Suddenly my rooks protect each other. Exactly. No, bishop b5. Bishop b5 check. Don't let him go in that direction because look. Bl Black has four pieces on this side of the board, on the queen, king side. On the queen side, he only has two, and it's more open, so you probably have more chances to mate it there. So you go with this check, king c8. Now? <laughs> you want to do that or queen c6? Which queen one would you go for? Yeah. If I go back, well... Right? King B8. Queen B6 check followed by knight B6. Uh, well, this is one, and this is another alternative. What do we do against this one? Yeah. Simple. So, bishop B7. Don't you want to play knight d6? Well, no, it's not the same thing because knight d6 attacks and controls that square. So when he protects, when you go there, it's mate. But if you have the bishop in c6 instead of the knight in d6, where's your mate? I mean, you should still be winning. You can play now knight d6, fine. I'll give you that. But um, anyways, the game ended there after queen d1. It's, it was like, obviously, black had some better choices. It's, it's like in any game, right? Yeah. I mean, but the final, the final is always, you know, the, the, cool, the cool thing about that. It's and nice. I could have played as well as Shiro in terms of results. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's, I, I, f I found it interesting because, you know, he's, both of them are dynamic players. So yeah. it, it's often a lot of great games come out of that because you know both players really want to attack or do something and then things like this can happen so hopefully you enjoyed um, today's two games